Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and happy that you're here for a little bit of crafty fun with me today. So I am traveling. Uh, wasn't sure if I'd have internet, so we pre-recorded today's content versus going live like we normally do. But join me next Tuesday and we will be live again for a little more paper crafting fun. So as you watch today's project, don't forget to share with your crafty friends and if you're not already a subscriber to my channel or follow me on Facebook, I'd love for you to go ahead and do so. Um, so are we ready to get started? Let me switch the camera over and let's have our fun. All right, so this project that we're creating today is featuring the flowering tulips and tulip fields stamp set. So I pulled both of them in. These are part of the flowering fields product suite that is on page 14 and 15 of our mini catalogs. So this is our January to June 2022 mini catalog. We're featuring that product suite in this month's all-star tutorial bundle. And boy, there are some great projects you don't want to miss. You can get your hands on the all-star tutorial bundle simply by placing an order online order with me. Um, if it is $50 or greater before shipping and tax, you will get the bundle for free or you can purchase the tutorial bundle for $15. So today's project uses a few elements from each of these two stamp sets. This was a color challenge that my team had. So each month we gather and do a, a team swap and uh, there's a different challenge each month. So we just had one and our challenge was a color challenge using pool party, melon mambo and granny apple green. And so here is my project. So this is a fast, easy, uh, card and it's got a fun, simple masking technique. So if you've never done masking before, hopefully this will help you. All right, let's get started. I'm first going to pull in my uh, pool party and basic white layers. So when you uh, extend the video, you're going to see see more, show more. If you do that and scroll down, you'll see the complete supply list um, with links. So you can just simply add items into your shopping cart. Um, there's also going to be the cut dimensions for all the layers, so you can recreate this one on your own. All right, let's pull in our foam pad because I'm using a photopolymer stamp set, and I found that this particular one works best if I have a foam pad underneath. So I'm going to place my pool party down. Now, the image that I'm using is this large triangular telescoping image, but I only want the lower portion of it. I don't want the pointed end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off my paper so that when I stamp down, I can just get the image where I want it. So to do that, I've chosen to put a little bit of removable tape, and this is a painter's tape, onto a scrap piece of paper. And run your fingers down a little bit so it's not quite so sticky. Sometimes uh, painter's tape will rip your uh, paper, your cardstock, when you remove it. So I'm going to go ahead and just lay that down. And then I'll we'll pull in my pool party ink pod and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that bottom layer. And again, I'm not worried about what happens up here because I've protected my cardstock. So I'm going to ink up that bottom layer there and I'll lay this down more or less centered in the middle portion of my panel. Now, because I've got that painter's tape on the edge, I'm going to give a little extra push up there so I don't end up with a hole in my stamping. All right, let's repeat this. This time I'm going to rotate my stamp. And I'm going to try to look through my stamp to see if I can get my stamped images really close together so I don't have a gap. If I end up with a gap, it's okay. You could also set this up on a stamp apparatus. Look at that. I missed a spot right there. I'm not going to worry about that on this. So remember how I told you when I give it a little extra push along that tape line? I forgot to do it. So let's try again on this side and I'll show you one more time. All right, so I've got this down. I'm going to give that a little extra push along that tape line. There we go. Not bad on that side. Now, I'm not worried about that little space because our layer, when we add our granny apple green, now we're going to cover some of that up. Now, I'm going to wipe off some of this excess ink that's on the tape because I'm going to reuse my mask for the inside layer. So I'm going to carefully remove this from my cardstock, slide that out of the way, and then we'll pull in our basic white layer. I'm going to lay this back down. Now, I want a narrower border on the white layer than what I'm using for the front. Let's go ahead and repeat our stamping just like we did on the pool party layer. Now, I think I might need to move this up a little bit. So 
so I'm not so down low. All right, there we go. So now you can stamp this just like before. I want to put a little extra pressure up by that tape. Make sure I get my image. Look down in the stamp and hook it and get this in the right place. Get that little extra push up where that tape is. There we go. And one more time. So this is just a really way, an easy way to mask off a portion of your stamp or your paper so that you don't get stamped images where you don't want them. All right, great. So now I have my lovely field of flowers just along the edge. That's a nice special touch, I think. All right, again, I'm gonna wipe away the excess ink because I'm gonna use this mask again because I've got quite a few swap cards to make. Oh, I got things flying, there we go. All right, now both of these layers are gonna layer on a piece of mango, not mango, melon mambo. I don't know why I do that. I do that a lot. Well, I put my adhesive on the wrong layer. I don't normally put my adhesive on the larger layer and then put the smaller layer on top. So I'm gonna hold off on that and let me grab a card base since I got a little excited. Just slide these over, we'll just build it all at once. All right, so I've got my four and a quarter by 11 inch pool party card stuff. We're gonna use for our card base, fold that in half, and then we're gonna put this melon mambo layer on the inside flat. And then we can take our layer that we masked the field of flowers on the white. Look how nice that looks. So much better than a plain white, right? It adds a little more pizzazz to it. Now you could add a sentiment on the inside as well. I've chosen not to. Um, I'll wait and uh, do that once I know how I'm gonna use this card. So it is a thank you based on the front sentiment, but I wanna have plenty of space to write a note. Cute. All right, on the front here, we've got our other Melon Mambo and our pool party there that we did our masking technique on as well. And we're just gonna layer these on top of each other. Now I'm using Stamp and Seal because that's my adhesive of choice, but you can use whatever makes you happy. And I'm gonna pop this on the card front with some dimensionals. There we go. And then we'll just put this right here on this front. Cute. All right, next step. So I like to build this whole medallion and then put it on all at once. I could adhere this white layer down first and then build on top of it, but I found for placement purposes, I preferred doing it the other way. So let's go ahead and pull in. Da -da -da. Got a little bit of a mess here. All right, so I'm gonna pull in my piece of basic white and my melon mambo stamp set or ink pad and grab that thank you sentiment and stamp this in the melon mambo. Now, if you're concerned or have any issues not getting a good stamped image, make sure you use a foam pad underneath. I didn't have any issues with this particular sentiment, so don't worry about it. And then I'm gonna bring in my favorite stylus shapes dies. I'm gonna use the third smallest circle and we're gonna go die cut this out. All right, so once I've got my sentiment, I can go ahead and attach that to my granny apple green layer. So I've actually already added texture to this for that beautiful deep floral image. So I use the, um, Bouquet of Love hybrid embossing folder. What makes this a hybrid is that it comes, the dies and the folder together. It's, it's a one purchase. And you can put the die inside the folder and die cut and emboss at the same time. Or you can use them individually. So I'm not using the dies on this project. I just use this beautiful floral from the embossing folder. All right, let's pull in some of our in-color twine. So this is Parakeet Party, which coordinates nicely with the granny apple grain. And I'm just gonna wrap this around a couple of times. I'm going to tie a little bow here. Now it seems like today my arthritis is getting me a little bit. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> All right, yay. So I got a nice little bow there. Turned out pretty cute already, I think. 
a little bit of a mind of its own. Twine will do that, won't it? All right, I'm gonna slide this down just a smidge. I'm gonna put it where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna put some dimensional dots right on this green layer to attach that white circle. I'm gonna be a little bit excessive with this because I wanna make sure I get a really good stability on the center of this because I am gonna pop up multiple layers. Now you don't have to do as many layers of pop up if you don't want to. I just really like the depth that it gives. Adds a special touch to it. So I'm going to lay this right on top and give that a good push. Nice and stable. Cute, 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 cute. All right, now I wanna repeat with my dimensionals because I'm gonna adhere my larger circle to this as well. So I die cut already another circle. So just plain white, the third largest circle with my stylish shapes dies. And I can layer this right over the top of that. Cute. Now this one is ready to adhere to my card front. So since this is popped up on the green, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the green onto the card base so it sits level. So let's go ahead and get our dimensionals in there. And I'm gonna be a little bit excessive. Again, I want this nice and stable. Let's see if I can tuck that in a little bit. I don't think that'll hurt anything. I got backing sticking to my fingers. There we go. And I am going to add a little liquid adhesive to the back of this. All right, that's just to secure it in place. It's not a must have, but I like it. All right, now I wanna make sure that I put this far enough down that I'm gonna cover up my little stamping boo-boo. So once I'm happy, I'm just gonna give it a little push. Now I intentionally didn't have the green there go all the way out to the edge, but I wanted it to be longer than the Melon Mambo. I think it adds a nice design interest to it. So stinky cute. All right, let's pull in some of our glossy dots. Love these. And we'll just sprinkle on a couple of these. Da -da, one more. Cute. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So much fun, so much fun, so much fun. Now, if you'd be interested in joining us for our next team swap, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, you can join my Diamonds team and get an awesome discount on all your Stampin' Up! products and hang out with us, which is cool, <laughs> right? Um, I also have registration going on now for my um, Flowering Tulips, I think is what it's called, home decor class. So here's a little peek at that project. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous project. You get lots of good products in with your packet. So you can make multiples of that project if you'd like to. So hopefully you'll join me for that class as well. All right, if you do have any questions, be sure to leave me a note in the video. And I appreciate you watching. And I will see you live next Tuesday. Thanks so much. Bye for now.